Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. It is that time. It is tarot time with Cindy, everybody. That means it's an open collective message. I'm gonna get right started. I actually, I pulled a few cards just to get like some sort of context and idea. I went into this deck, the Mausolea, Oracle of the Souls, and I'm also working with the um, Oracle of the Radiant Sun. Here, these two Oracle decks. Um, we have Anubis. Abraham is at the bottom. You have harmony. And at the bottom, you have power and inheritance. Uh, power and inheritance is the moon in Scorpio. Inherit power is moon in Scorpio. Inheritance is Saturn in Scorpio. Harmony is sun in Libra. Okay, <laughs> y'all, this is a really interesting reading. So you can already see the cards are very powerful. This is basically, this card for me, in my spread, is asking like, what point is your soul right now in a journey? Okay, there's a journey that your soul is involved in. You are literally standing at the gates of truth. Truth. Truth is huge here. This is like real truth. This is not made up truth in your head. This is not made up truth um, based on, you know, presumptions that you you have about different things going on in your life. You have truth in both these cards. As I'm looking at this underline, I'm see like this this is about secrets, hidden secrets, the power of secrets as well with the moon in Scorpio, but inheriting, going through the labyrinth to discover the truth. It's like the truth is written all over this reading. For y'all. Wow, we also these are also a double eight. I didn't realize that. These are also both a number eight in this um in that deck okay this is what you're actually manifesting is harmony so you're manifesting harmony this is harmonious relationships based on the cards that are your underlying i feel like you've been working through deep truths in your reality now this reality goes beyond just what exists outside of yourself a really big part of this truth discovery is what is within your heart and what is within your soul and aligning yourself with the path that represents that. So you are standing at the gates of the path that represents your truth. And it's kind of too, there's a, there's, I want to say a sense of, of judgment that goes on at this and it's honest judgment though this isn't like you know the kind of judgment when we hear that word we think oh these are critical people that are looking at me through their own mindset and their own vision of what they think i should be this is like through through heaven this is through spirit and this is even sort of like through yourself your higher your higher self your deeper self is part of all of this so it's weighing out your heart what is in your heart that's the question to ask yourself right now, because the heart is one of the most powerful vehicles for manifestation. So what's in your heart right now? How are you feeling? How are you allowing things to affect you in, in your day to day life? Because it's really important right now. I feel like you all are on the cusp of attaining a really beautiful, peaceful, balanced life here for yourselves a cycle a really significant cycle for some of you this could be a romantic cycle with libra it's definitely unions in terms of people that will have a significant uh, meaning and I, i'm kind of really also feeling the significance in these relationships are kind of based on on depth getting depth longevity and when i hear longevity i'm hearing lifetimes to come so these might be relationships that you're going to be opening up that are even new contracts new soul contracts that are going on here you've earned your way through some sort of labyrinth and mystery you've come to a conclusion you've found the truth and the peace within your heart okay it's who this is if it's resonating if this is not oh i forgot to say that at the beginning because it's true um you know you can't come in and yell at me that's right there it's saying what's in your heart okay what's in your heart right now because that's what's being measured if your heart is filled with bitterness anger envy jealousy 
this is not your reading because you're not manifesting that <laughs> you're not right so it's kind of like to you know just to do a little check but it's also to show you that when you do start to switch that up within your own heart then things actually do start to change for you you will have those changes but these are not things that you can you can't bypass this energy through you know uh, our own lies that we have within our ego we can't bypass this by showing up in a really fake and superficial way to the outside world but knowing deep inside you know i'm just doing this because i hate these fucking people and i you know what i'm gonna it's gonna look good though it's gonna look good and god sees right through that shit <laughs> sees right through that shit um but you guys like there's authenticity here in these cards they really because the fact that you're you're manifesting this it tells me that you're standing at these gates you're standing at this gate and your heart is being weighed and it's like oh Annabelle's saying yo it's the the weight of a feather right now it is the weight of the feather because love carries no weight there is no weight in love that's interesting that i said that I'm saying like weight as in like the volume or of something, but I'm seeing like flash across my eyes, W-A-I-T. There is no weight in love. You do not have to wait for love. Love is within you. Love is all around you. And you can manifest through that. It is the, I'm literally seeing like different wires and conduits and ways that people are trying to manifest or project uh, futures for themselves i'm seeing like people that are like vision boarding it and thinking about it and my focus is where i go and i'm seeing like you know that all the wires you know how like there's i think copper isn't copper one of the uh, copper and gold aren't they really uh good conductors or something like that it's it's sort of like that i don't know what it, or i kind of feel like water is probably one of the best conductors but I, whatever's the best conductor that's like the representation of the heart it's just like it just flows. It just flows forward. Whereas all of these others that I'm seeing, like thoughts, visual projection. Yeah, yeah, they're good. They'll conduct. They'll get you there. But not necessarily in the purest way possible and also not in the fastest way possible. Because, yeah, this is, this is a direct line of communication between heart, desire, intent, and future outcome. Mm -hmm. it's this this is just so fascinating to me because both of these entities in these cards the way they're holding they're holding, right? It's like they're weighing. Something's come into a balance here to me in this Abraham card. It's almost like there's the significant... It, it's significant in that it feels like there's at least two, two portals, two thresholds that you have to meet to create some type of harmony future for your... harmonious future for yourself. And you've been through the gates with Abraham. Do you want me to read what Abraham is here? Justice, truth, and duty. This is actually a really fascinating deck. I've been using this deck on my Patreon to look at the soul's journey of the people that we've been looking into. And they're not in alphabetical order, so you gotta give me a second. Oh, he's the first one. He's the first one. Abraham. So each one of these are also represented in different uh, realms. This is the Republic of Pandemonium. So Abraham is the justice of Pandemonium. So I'm going to describe to you what Pandemonium is first. And I'll tell you what Abraham is about. The city of Pandemonium and its surrounding lands belong not to the gods, but to the archons of human achievement. These icons bound themselves in life, not to gods or faith, but to human ideals, becoming idols and objects 
of veneration in their own way. To dwell in pandemonium is to still be bound by the temporal goals and abilities of a human life, whether the glory of success or the haunting specter of failure. So, you know, you could you could come into this life and even have like a preconceived notion of yourself that you may even be godlike, but aren't we all the spark of God? But you've also chosen chosen a human existence here. And the choices and the actions that you take have dramatic ramifications for the outcome of the life that you're living. Now, I kind of like get that energy. So this is Abraham. Justice of Pandemonium. And known for his wisdom and his dedication to justice and truth in both life and death. And once mortal, Abraham is the judge of pandemonium. He can see though he can see though any falsity or subterfuge and determine the worthiness or unworthiness of those who come before his court. Although he arrived in the afterlife ragged, broken, and stripped of himself, that which was most real in himself persevered. His moral integrity, his dedication to justice and duty, his personal honor. Abraham shows us the truth of our temporal selves. What in us is worth keeping, balanced against what is unworthy of our future selves and best abandoned in the wastes. So I feel like when I, if you've been on my channel for a while, you know, I talk about like portals and the truth of who you are and the resonance that you reflect and what vibration, vibrational frequency comes off of you. And when you approach that portal, what, how, how does it recognize you? You need to be in the purity of that. But what I'm really getting with this is kind of like a secondary recognition is that it's like Abraham recognizes only those that reflect back to him as he knows himself. So you must go through the same trials and the same journey that Abraham here has been through to pass the gate. And right, so you've passed the gate. That's what I'm saying. These cards are really, really beautiful. So you've even perhaps, I feel the most important judgment is the judgment, is the truthful judgment that we, we pass upon ourselves. And the truthful judgment that we pass upon ourselves is to unearth the truth of the heart and the beauty of our soul. What have we taken on? What choices have we made that do not align with that path? Are we taking those forward? Yeah, you know, we actually can't take that forward. So you're pretty much at a dead end if you're not going to reflect. But you've reflected and you've even come out of this. This is not an easy journey to take. There could be a lot of hidden secrets about yourself that have been difficult to look at and you've seen them and you've you know, looked at them head on and you found your way. You were inheriting something that has always been yours. But only the true you can, can claim it. And it was just like, it's very, perhaps, I want to, not perhaps, um, what most of us kind of know of him and literally yes it is walking through the gates kind of like of rebirth but first your heart must be weighed and this is telling me though if so let's say you're having a particularly bad day or let's say there's something going on in your your life that is incredibly negative and it has the potential to to bring you down to put you in that headspace and to make you an incredibly negative person and you know shoulder the weight of that negativity and then pass it on to the rest of the world. This is transforming it and transmuting it and alchemizing it so that you realize, you know, I don't need to focus on that. I just focus on the love that I have in my heart, the love within myself and the love that is really the only, is, is pure truth. And there you go. So you might even be having some tests while you stand at the gate is kind of the message that I'm also getting with this as well. You may be experiencing some tests while you're standing at the gate at this threshold. The Tarot of the Abyss. The Abyss kind of feels like, you know, walking through the labyrinth with the Inheritance card. Maybe not even realizing you're at the gate. The greatest test is when you really don't. I want to say, the teacher performs the greatest test when the student doesn't realize they're being tested. That is the most truthful test. The most truthful result.
there may be an obligation here for you to to find um my Siri Siri coming on there. I'm not talking to you. I don't know. Siri thinks that she's involved with obligations. Um you may need to persevere in some form of neutrality right now as well. There's an obligation for you to do this. There could be something going on around someone maybe significant to you or some sort of path or goal that you have. There might be something going on around that. And it's honestly, it's kind of like saying that this is not necessarily what you should be getting involved in. It is kind of like a stay in your own lane. You have, wow, you have the, the Wheel of Fortune, the High Priestess. Ah, and the, and the Five of Cups. That's interesting, but this is what you got to look at. It's this Five of Cups. <laughs> there. So some of you might be struggling with this right now because you're standing on the threshold of great change. Huge, huge change. With the Wheel of Fortune and the High Priestess, it's like you've got the change here, but you can't proceed into the change if you have this Five of Cups. So there might be something... Okay, one of the ways I kind of like to look at the Five of Cups is kind of like situational depression. And then I'll look at the Nine of Swords like um, more like a clinical depression, like something that you're dealing with all the time and it's like a mental health issue where this is, you know, you can have mental health issues based on situation, but so like that's it. Like there's a situation around you right now that is difficult to perhaps be happy in that situation or to find happiness. You don't have to be happy about the situation and you don't even have to be happy, but it is honestly talking about what is the focus? How are you focusing? What can you find inside you that is the one thing that gives you the emotional stability and security, the emotional security that you seek? It's always been within you. It's kind of like Dorothy in the ruby slippers, right? It's always been within you. It's always been with you. This balance with to with the yin and the yang symbol that the high priestess are. because there is this portal behind her it's balance it's taking this balance persevere you have an obligation here to be neutral to what that is i don't know it's you know it could be different for many of you let's i'm going to add my cards the wheel of fortune The Page of Swords. Oh, look at it. She's like, is she entering the labyrinth or exiting the labyrinth? And it's like she's looking for this spiritual guidance to go through the labyrinth. The Moon. And the Nine of Cups. The high, okay, the high priestess, let me see all of them. The high priestess. The strength card, there's the perseverance. The devil. That's almost like a forced perseverance. And the seven of pentacles. The Five of Cups. There's a fascinating thing happening on the table right now. I'm going to take a picture of it because I, if I hold the card up, you won't see it. I got to remember to put this in the video. There is a rainbow going across. So I'm going to put this in. I got to remember. You see that? There is a rainbow going across the edge of the Five of Cups from where it's sitting. So. The light is shining through. I think it's just like French doors there. And so, you know, it's kind of beveled glass and the light is shining through it. And it's breaking up the um, the light beams, the light. And it's causing like the rainbow to appear. The rainbow, this emotional happiness and fulfillment actually does exist around you. It is allowing it to filter through. Allow it to filter through yourself.
Four of Wands, Four of Cups, the Chariot. You were moving out of a period here. Well, to get out of this, Page of Wands at the bottom. Not important right now. <laughs> it's not. Okay. Where you are right now. I, th I feel like many of you are sort of at a dark point in this labyrinth. This puzzle, this determining the truth, finding some sort of true path and truth for yourself here. You are at the darkest point in this labyrinth. And it's coming across to me like when you enter the labyrinth, there's light behind you. It's something that you used to know and you enter this labyrinth and you're working your way through it. And as you're working your way through it, that light from the past is fading. You are working your way towards like the light, the enlightenment of the future. But there's all these turns. So the light is not reflected directly at the light is not reflected. The light is being reflected. The rainbow is being reflected at you indirectly here. If your head is down, I'm going to hold this card up. I obviously, as soon as I move it, you can't see the rainbow. But if your head is down, you can't see the rainbow. You can't see the hope. You can't see the end of a difficult trial as well. This harmony in the future to, to me looks like it's something that you've wished for. You are you are kind of like standing at a test here to persevere. The perseverance feels more like the challenge than anything else right now. As best as you can, hold yourself in a neutral place. You are obligated to do that. I want to ask that. Why? You know, Anubis says you are obligated for this neutrality. <coughs> Why are they obligated? The Eight of Cups. Because you've walked away from something. Either you've walked away from something or something has walked away from you. And by doing that, it's almost like Anubis is saying you need to make a commitment to this. You're obligated to stay neutral and persevere. Could have been a decision that you made and you need to stick with it and see how it unfolds. And then while that's happening, it is really discovering the truth and the beauty and the happiness and the love within your own heart. And then you proceed forward. And what's that? What is that? So we're going to look at that. So the harmony. This is what you're manifesting. Oh, so the other thing I wanted to say. Ah... You have to allow the universe to place something back into your hand. There's was something going on about the hands here. You see how they're all holding both of them. They're to, to me like weighing. They're weighing, determining, and you've let something fall out of your hand. You've taken it out. No. So there's an obligation here that you need to hold to that. And then here though in the harmony card, the hand is out to receive. It is to receive. So you were obligated to persevere and stay neutral because you were meant to receive. Harmony. Awakening. It is the judgment card in most tarot. It's called the awakening here. It is rising up out of your old self and it is passing the gates of judgment, right? On the other side. That's what you're manifesting. What you're manifesting is also on the other side of a portal that you have not quite walked through yet. So you can't see it clearly. 
You can't see the manifestation. It's there. Uh, love, your heart, the, the purity of that energy within you, it knows no bounds. It can go through any portal, space and time. It's already on the other side. The energy of your heart's intent is already on the other side of this portal. The Four of Swords, the King of Swords, and the Seven of Wands. I'm going to put cards under them. Under the Four of Swords is the Six of Cups, healing the past, a healed past. Healing how you saw or remember the past. <clears throat> oh, there's that page of wands under the king of swords. The seven of wands is the, it was the three of wands. You are being asked to guard a future that is coming for you. It is incredibly imperative right now, especially if you find yourself in a really healthy, balanced space, right? Emotional, mental. It is really important to maintain that. It uses an obligation more to yourself than anything else or anyone else to stay in that state, to stay neutral. There could be energies that are trying to pull you out of that. There could be situations going on around you that may try to pull you out of the neutrality. But this future harmony, in that future, you will have a clear and healed understanding of your past. You will, <laughs> Lily is barking about. You're also, I kind of want to say, perhaps some of you have been guarded or you felt guarded in situations that you've been through to get to this point in time. Because this is receiving. This is receiving what it is that wants to come in. And what did I say? It's like you're supposed to receive. You're supposed to receive this harmony. There you are. Fresh journey. The fool. The star both very Aquarian and in the King of Pentacles and the Knight of Pentacles. Having the courage to reach for the stars is honestly what that feels like. Having the courage to reach for the stars and experience the reality of it here on earth. And that collective is the reading that I have for you. I'm going to go into the extended. In the extended, I'm going to, it's going to be generalized kind of, right? Because it's not a private reading in the extended, but it is a more condensed energy. In the extended, I'm going to look at what the journey of your soul has been and what the journey of your soul is moving into. We're going to do that. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Until next time, be gentle with yourselves. Bye.